good evening everyone uh, today i'm going to talk about a very important topic which is a uh, tvr syndrome and uh, i'm not go I'm going to talk about the pathogenesis the etiology and the uh, basic uh, mechanism of glycine toxicity so all of us know about uh, that and uh, the main purpose of uh, this video is to bring a clarity on the management of the tvr syndrome uh, we have been managing patients of tvr syndrome and uh, this is uh, something very common, though around one to two percent of the patients actually develop this. But uh, when it comes to explaining this in the YY exam, there is some lack of clarity on the management aspect. So just a few important points, very briefly, we are going to discuss in this video. And uh, so the first thing I would like to emphasize that we should not forget mentioning about uh, for any emergency station not just your syndrome talking about uh, a to e approach in the a to e approach we should make sure that uh, we mention about the exposure as well which is important because you have to expose to look at the bladder palpate for the bladder and that will rule out a hemorrhage or a clot retention it's important to look at the uh, disorientation status because that will be uh, an indirect uh, implication of the CNS involvement and uh, also uh, for any signs of sepsis. So it is important that we rule out sepsis and rule out uh, ble any bleeding before we label the patient for a TWAR syndrome. When it comes to circulation, make sure we tell that we are going to send the samples for full blood count, UNEs, and here we really want electrolytes. Which electrolytes? They will ask you, and we have to mention about the potassium as well, along with sodium. Why do you want the potassium? What happens to the potassium in TWAR syndrome? There is fluid overload. The fluid is going to move into the cells, and the cells are going to undergo lysis. And so the cells are storehouses of potassium. There is going to be release of potassium into the circulation and hyperkalemia. So hyponatremia is accompanied with hyperkalemia and TOR syndrome. So it's important that we get both the electrolytes. So what next? So after this, we should make sure that uh, we mention about injection furosemide. Injection furosemide is important, 40 milligram. Preferably avoid talking about uh, talking about Lasix. Better to use the word furosemide, 40 milligram intravenously. This is going to remove the excess fluid which has been absorbed. And then after that, talk about the correction of the hyponatremia. The next important step is correction of hyponatremia. So this is important. Basic protocol. Now, when it comes to correction of hyponatremia, we should be very, very clear about this. So very quickly, we will look into this. And regarding correction of hyponatremia, the first principle is you find out the sodium deficit. So how do you find the sodium deficit? So the basic formula to calculate the sodium deficit is you find out the target sodium and subtract it with the plasma sodium, the patient's sodium level of the patient, sodium level of the patient, Okay, and then you multiply this with 0.6 and you multiply this with the body weight. So this is going to be the basic formula, the target sodium minus the sodium level of the patient into 0.6 into body weight. And suppose the sodium level of the patient, now this is very important for you to understand at this point that the target sodium for a patient you are treating for TWAR syndrome is not 135 or a 140. The target sodium is just 125. For most of the patients of hyponatremia you are managing, you just want the acute episode of the sodium, the hyponatremia should reach at to the level of 125. From 125 to the normal level of 135, you can manage it without a hypertonic saline. But when it comes below 125, then you have to initiate a hypertonic saline management. And that's why you need this formula and calculate the sodium deficit. So this is very important that the target sodium is 125 in this patient. And suppose the serum uh, sodium level of the patient is around 110. And if you multiply this, so it's going to be around 15 into 0 0.6 into 
suppose the body weight is 60. Now, one important point that you should be very, 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 very clear when we talk about this formula. See, uh, this formula suggests that 15 is the total sodium milliequivalent per liter of sodium that has to be corrected. But you should know one thing very clearly that you are not supposed to correct more than 10 to 12 milliequivalent of sodium per liter of sodium in 24 hours. So suppose you are going to manage this patient, you are not going to use this formula because your target sodium, this difference should not be 15. When you are managing the patient within the first 24 hours, your target is 10 to 12. You are not correcting 15 milliequivalent per liter in the first 24 hours. So repeat it after first 24 hours before you uh, calculate the next dose of uh, correction that has to be given. So basically what I want to say is, instead of using this formula for sodium deficit, just put 10 to 12 instead of 15, multiply it by 0 0.6, multiply it by body weight 60, and then you get your sodium deficit. And if you multiply it, I think uh, if I use a calculator, so this is going to be, the range is going to be 360 to what I have calculated is 430, suppose around, mostly. This is going to be the range. This is the milli equivalent of sodium deficit which the patient is having. So, and this is the sodium deficit that has to be corrected in the first 24 hours of the t syndrome. in row. So no need to calculate 15, 20 deficit immediately. Immediately what has, you have to do in the first 24 hours is to replenish this 10 to 12 milli equivalent per liter with this formula. So uh, now the next step, once you have found the sodium deficit, so this was the step number one. The next step is Believe me, the next step is even much simpler. You know, the step two is how do you correct it? Now it's time for you to correct it. Initiate the correction with hypertonic saline. That is 3% normal, 3% normal saline. Okay. So you are going to initiate it, the correction with a 3% normal saline. Now, this is a hypertonic saline. What is the, how much sodium is present in this? So this contains 512 milli equivalent of sodium per liter. Okay, so this is the concentration of sodium in a 3% of normal saline, which is 512 milli equivalent per liter. Now suppose, if we go back, this was the correction. Suppose we have to correct around 430 milli equivalents in the first 24 hours. So 430 milli equivalents are to be corrected. So if this amount of uh, milliequivalents are present in one liter of 3% NaCl, then 430 milliequivalents, how much amount of normal saline, 3% normal saline you are going to require? So this is going to come around 0. Point, somewhat 0. 0.8 liters of 3% NaCl which is going to be around 800 ml, roughly, roughly 800 ml of 3% of normal saline. So believe me, this is not very difficult. So in the first 24 hours, you are supposed to instill 800 ml of 3% NaCl. So what should be the rate of infusion per hour? So for rate of infusion of normal saline because that is what the examiner will ultimately end up asking at what rate are you going to infuse the three percent normal saline so the third thing is rate of infusion of three percent normal saline is you divide this 800 ml by 24 hours so you will get ml per hour and this is roughly going to come at uh, around uh, 30 35 ml per hour Roughly going to come around 35. I'm using a calculator. You use a calculator, no problem. But these are the basic uh, thing. If you do it in regular practice, you will start remembering it. So believe me, it's not difficult. In the first 24 hours, your rate of correction has to be around 30 to 40 ml per hour of people's and normal saline. This is uh, how you correct the hyponatremia. Now there is another school of thought. 
So this is the basic thing that you can mention in the exam and this is very good to go. How do you manage hyponatremia? There should be no confusion. Just quick review. You calculate the sodium deficit. Don't calculate it from the patient's serum level. That is uh, however low. Support it is 100. You are not going to correct 25 milli equivalent in the first 24 hours. So definitely in the first 24 hours, I'm going to correct 10 to 12 milli equivalent per liter of sodium. And if we uh, put it in a formula, it's going to come around 360 to 430 milli equivalent per liter that I have to correct. Milli equivalents of sodium that I have to instill. And if we look at the concentration of the 3% normal saline, it contains uh, 512 milli equivalents per liter. So to correct that first 24 hour requirement, we need about 800 ml of 3% NACL. Now this one bottle of 3% NACL is about 100 ml. So you need eight bottles of 3% NACL. Okay, so the rate of infusion is very simple. Just divide it by 24 and you'll get a rate of infusion per hour. So some school of thought is you just correct uh, in the first 24 hours, you divide it into two halves. So another school of thought is you divide the first 24 hours into four hours and 20 hours. And you and still you correct uh, about four milli equivalent in the first uh, four hour and you correct the six milli equivalent in the next 20 hours. So you do a rapid correction first and then a slow correction. This is another school of thought. And as per this school of thought, the rate of correction is around 60 ml per hour or 3% normal saline, hypertonic saline. And then you slow down to 30 ml per hour in the second half. This is just another school of thought. So you might be practicing any of them. Doesn't matter. You should have a clarity on what you are explaining to the examiner. Don't just say, okay, I'll put a three, I'll give 3% NACL. Okay, and then the examiner asks you at what rate, and then you are confused. So be very clear in this. I wanted to highlight this, and we'll be discussing more such conceptual questions and uh, controversial questions. So just stay tuned, and all the best. Thank you.